Well, most of us do not want to eat that mystery powder just like that. But our food manufacturers don't think so. Hey, Dietitian Tor here. The name of that white powder is called monodextrin. For this white powder, you just need to remember three things. First one is highly processed and refined, which means that absolutely there's no nutrients in them. Second, it's very high in glycemic index. The glycemic index is around 80 to 120, which means it's even higher than the table sugar. It means that it raises our blood sugar level very fast, which is not a good thing for us. Thirdly, it is widely used in a lot of things that we eat every day. Why people want to eat that if it is bad and doesn't even have a taste? It is because this powder has been widely used in food industry as thickener or filler to increase the volume of a processed food. It is very cheap, so manufacturers like it. I just came back from Coles and Woolies and bought something to show you. As you probably can see, there are four big bowls on my left, and each of them have something in it. Let's check them out. This is a moment of truth, and I promise it will blow your mind. Maltodextrin is so commonly used in food industry, it is impossible to get rid of it completely. Our goal is to minimize it in our diet as much as possible. To do this, there's a very simple tip to follow. Make sure maltodextrin is not in the first three or four ingredients listed. If it comes after the fourth ingredient, you don't have to worry about it because the amount will be tiny. Let's check out the first food in product. Wow, Gravox? Who haven't used Gravox to make gravy? Monodextrin is the first ingredient. It indicates that the amount of monodextrin is significant. Most of the powdered gravies are like that. We generally do not recommend them. Instead, liquid gravy like this could be a good alternative. There is no monodextrin in the first three ingredients. However, you might have noticed a thickener called Vensum gum. It's fourth on the list. I will have a video or write an article about this item. Watch that space. In a nutshell though, this ingredient is very safe and is even considered a form of soluble fiber. Second one, cup of soup. Who haven't tried a cup of soup on a cold winter Sunday morning? Monodextrin is the second ingredient. Some of the cup of soups have significant amounts of monodextrin, some don't. However, all cup of soups and similar products are highly processed. Ironically, it carries a 99% fat-free sign to indicate that it is healthy. Please do not be fooled by that. A sign like this does not indicate it doesn't have any other concerning ingredients. As you may be able to see, when you drink one pack, you're actually drinking the equivalent of one slice of white bread plus 30% of your daily salt allowance. In general, we encourage you to limit the consumption of these products. Third one. Up and go. You seriously? I thought they're healthy. This is a tricky one, my friends. To make it simple, as you can see, monodextrin is listed third, and cane sugar, which is the same as refined sugar, is fourth. Because of this, we generally do not recommend it. Interestingly, I think you might have noticed that it carries a 4.5 health star rating. For those who don't know about this health star rating, it is an Australian government initiative to promote healthy eating. This star rating system ranges from 0 to 5. 0 out of 5 means the product is not not healthy at all. Well, 5 out of 5 means the product is very healthy. I'm not here to challenge the star system at all. In most of the cases, a product which has a higher score tends to be healthier. A 4.5 out of 5 should be a healthy product, but there are exceptions. Fortunate enough, our health department have recognized this and is trying to improve it. For the regular up and go, the model detection level is high. A healthier alternative is up and go, no added sugar. See? Motor detection is not even on the list. Last bowl. Pass and sauce. I like it. So quick and easy and tasty. Some of them are high in motor detection like this one. Some are not. In general, they are highly processed and we do not recommend them. A good quality, relatively low in carbohydrates and high in fiber, authentic pasta like Guzzi's could be a much better option. I'll be writing an article about this soon. Interestingly, if you read more dietary information on their websites, sometimes they tell you what food or food categories contains a lot of them. However, most of these are from America. 
I've spent a lot of time in Australian supermarkets researching which products contain large amounts of maltodextrin. However, I can't go through them one by one here as it would take too long. But I wrote a blog article that includes most of the food products that contains significant amounts of maltodextrin. Please check it out below. Subscribe to this channel for more interesting topics. And together, let us shop savvy and eat savvy.